So good afternoon, everybody. Um, so quickly, um, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, um, the first thing we decided to do was to sort of disseminate a survey to just gain better understanding around impact um, and where businesses are, are need support the most. Um, and so we did that in partnership with Budget Nigeria. And presently, analysis is ongoing, but I'm going to share preliminary findings. And I would encourage everyone listening to me now to follow us, Space Foundation, on all of our social media platforms so that when we share the whole report, you will be able to have access to it. So we surveyed almost 2,000 businesses across 36 states in Nigeria, including FCT, and 80% of these businesses are micro businesses right? Yeah. Uh, which is very understandable because the bulk of the MSMEs we have in Nigeria, over 41 million of them are MSMEs. So it wasn't surprising that the bulk of the people who responded to the survey are MSMEs. 80% um, of them are also registered businesses paying tax. Um, almost 40% of them employ between 60 to 20, 20 people. 58% um, of them employ between one and five people. But here's the interesting thing, about 95% of them indicated that their businesses have been impacted negatively um, because of, of the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in areas like cash flow, revenue, sales, production, and then payment of salaries and wages. Um, like Titi mentioned, with regards to available cash that uh, entrepreneurs or businesses have to stay afloat, only about 60% of the survey of the businesses we surveyed had enough cash to stay afloat for about one to seven days and a maximum of four weeks. Now, a total of 73% altogether are able to stay afloat in business for maximum of three months at the most, um, which just which just really says a lot with regards to where businesses are in terms of liquidity. Um, now, we wanted to know how they're accessing cash, where they're getting the cash to stay afloat. 53% of them yeah. essentially are leveraging on their reserves. So cash reserves that they have, they're leveraging that. 13% of them are looking to access loans to be able to stay afloat. And about 9% of them are looking to family and friends. Now, another major statistic or staggering fact that was observed from the survey is the fact that 80% of the people we surveyed are likely to lay off staff. At least two to five employees will be laid off. Um, but interestingly, 47% of the businesses we surveyed indicated that they were positive, that their businesses would be able to stay afloat um, and just survive the pandemic. Um, about 30% though are not very sure of where their businesses would be after um, the, the pandemic. With regards to urgent areas of support or areas where urgent support is needed, um, one, as, um, as, as a lot of us have probably guessed, is business financing, um, working capital, and also market linkages. Um, so in a nutshell, those are some of the major stats and data that's, that's sort of jumping out at first to me. Um, like I mentioned, analysis is still ongoing and the full report will be disseminated. So please, um, access or follow us Pay Foundation on all our social media platforms to be able to access the full report. But Titi, um, just for the purpose of this conversation, those Thank are you some very of the much, major Amaka. Um, and while we wait for financial advisor, Mr. Maberry, to join us, I want to ask you another question because uh, we, we did, we did a, a research at the NSG and we saw that the if you if one adds up the um, stimulus intervention, and I mean government and private sector, it only amounts to about 3.1% of total GDP. And when you compare that to the 10% that is, um, the, the, the 10, the, the, the 10 that South Africa has, we see that is really minimal, meaning that even though we're saying government should put out, push out palliative measures, uh, provide funding and all this is actually not enough. Entrepreneurs would rethink their model and 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 work out ways in which they thrive and survive in this um in this financial difficult financial climate. So Amaka, please I know you work with a lot of MSMEs and um Fish Foundation is um is a thought leader in um as regards um, entrepreneurship. 
kindly um, put us through or explain like an exposure as to the models, the new business models that MSMEs can adopt. Thank you. Thanks, Titi. Um, while we would definitely encourage the government to inject a bit more funding so that businesses can access those funds, because we definitely businesses definitely need that. Um, businesses can also begin to look inwards with regards to what they can do and how they can adapt their businesses. And the first thing I would suggest and recommend would be for businesses to self-assess, right? So assess your business, assess your financial position in terms of available cash, assets, um, debt, suppliers, payroll, and be clear on where your business stands, right? The next thing I would also recommend with regards to rethinking your business model would be to sort of observe market changes and the, and the opportunities that exist. For example, what is the potential customer demand for your products or, or, or services? What's also the demand for your sector in light of the current situation that we're in right now, right? What are the opportunities that exist to introduce new products and new services? In fact, are there opportunities to collaborate with suppliers? Are there opportunities to col collaborate with competitors, right? Um, so, so these are some of the, these are, these are the two major steps I would recommend for entrepreneurs to take in terms of rethinking your business model. So for example, if you're operating within the agricultural sector, um, one of the challenges that really just jumps out is definitely with regards to storage, it's with regards to um, logistics, um, it's also with regards to uh, just so essentially storage and logistics, right? So um, the question for you, if you're a business operating within the ag agricultural sector, would be to say, after you've done a self-assessment for your business, would be to say, these challenges that I see, can my business provide solutions to the current challenges that we see? And it's not like these challenges weren't there initially, but I think that the COVID-19 pandemic just sort of made these gaps a bit more apparent, right? So it's really obvious that these gaps and challenges exist within the space. How can your business sort of reposition itself to provide solutions to these challenges, right? So like I mentioned, if you're in the agricultural space, that might be something you want to think of. So take, for example, you're an event planner, you know, right now you're most probably not um, hosting events or hosting weddings and all of that. So what's the next step for you? Well, interestingly, people are having Zoom weddings these days. Um, I'm guessing there's nothing technology cannot do, right? So, so the question for you as a business owner would be to say, what are these opportunities I'm saying? If people are having Zoom weddings, is that something I can take on as an event planner and take that on for a fee and say, you know what, I would coordinate your Zoom wedding and take that stress off of you. You know, um, if, for instance, you run a working, uh, a co-working space um, 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 environment, for example, the other thing you might want to think about is providing a space where people can have conferencing meetings, right? With the impact of COVID-19, there's a lot of conferencing meetings, you know, and all of that going on right now. So how do you sort of plug yourself? How do you position your business to say, even if I don't have people coming in to maybe rent a space for their businesses, they'll most likely come in to host conferences and host, uh, I'm sorry, teleconferencing meetings. How can I position myself to provide that service? You know, if for instance, you're a makeup artist, Right now, you're definitely not going out to make people up for events. But guess what? You can host online tutorials, you know. So I think that the key for every business person out there in terms of rethinking their business model will be to just sit back, assess the business, observe the market changes right now, and identify opportunities that their businesses can key into. One thing that is, however, very apparent is that whether you, regardless of the sector you operate in, technology is definitely an enabler across board. So this is something you definitely need to sort of adopt in your business. Um, I think a key data I omitted when I was given findings, the pre preliminary findings, was the fact that about 73% of the businesses we surveyed cannot offer their products or services virtually. Now, if you fall in that category, this is definitely the time to adopt technology and infuse that within your you know, mode of operation. 
while for service-based businesses it might be a bit difficult however you still need to actively think about how to utilize technology um, to provide you know and offer your products and services so in terms of rethinking your business plan and business i'm sorry business model those are some of my okay thank you very much what i hear maka say is leverage technology partner partner collaborate as much as you can with the sectors that are, ex are already thriving in this um in this claim because we already see ict is projected that ict is going to thrive we see pharmaceutical thriving yes and it's we thriving also see already pharmaceuticals too and we um looking at the palliative, um, palliative measures um the federal government um gave import duty waivers for pharmaceutical firms so we can see how we can align is it are we going to align a supply um chain to supply chains of pharmaceuticals so that we can partner we need to rethink sit back strategize and see how we can work and partner with the sectors that are thriving and also um mr adaji was um, talking about um working with um organized private sector be a member of smith and nasmi see how you can access this fund and i know we've, we've really not spoken about um, access to funds so i will let um mr shegun adaji who doubles as our um energy ex and also experts to just give us an insight as to how we can um, assess um, more funding especially since we need uh, just quickly his final thoughts on this since we also need funding to assess power mr Ad um, adaji your final thoughts on this all right thank you so much can you hear me Yes, we can. I, I talked about um, the microfinance model. Um, so, if you work with groups and associations, they cross themselves, they know themselves very well. They have some forms of. of Mr. Dadju, are you here? Me? Hello, Mr. Dadju. Okay, we cannot hear Mr. Dadju, but uh, time is almost up. Um, Maka, please, can you give us your final thoughts you, uh, before we round up? Hello, can you hear me? So my final thoughts me? really will be around oh, encouraging you, yes, entrepreneurs to... Yes, we can hear you, Mr. To... Sorry, Amaka. We can hear you. Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So my final thoughts really will be around encouraging entrepreneurs to just sit back um, assess their businesses as it is presently and rethink of or identify opportunities that exist and reposition the businesses to key into those opportunities that exist. Because as sad as the situation is, there are also opportunities that are cropping up. So the question would be how well and how fast are you able to adapt to the changes within your environment or within your sector and reposition your business so that you such that your business thrives during this period and even post COVID. Thank you very much, Amaka. Uh, Mr. Are you there? However, you can please follow this conversation on our energy social media platform. We'll do an exhaustive um, message on how you can access finance since we weren't able to cover it that much. Thank you again for being. Um, Wonderful listeners to my audience, a wonderful panelists, and thank you, uh, Africa Next um, the Way Forward Conference. Thank you, Ngrazi. We really had a very wonderful time, and I hope it was an interactive um, and engaging session for the audience too.